Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. It's National Bike Safety Week, so I brought my family's bike helmets today. So what are they wearing if their helmets are here right now? They are not on bikes because they know the importance of keeping a bike helmet. My husband was in a bike crash several years ago and hmm. it's been credited. If it wasn't for the helmet, we don't know what could have happened. We'll share with you some bike safety tips coming up in just a little bit. But first, we're going to take a quiz in honor of another yes, holiday that is quizzes. being celebrated coming up. Is this up a real holiday or May another 20th. one that you've made up? Or better it's, yet, a holiday that was made up by the growers of whatever this holiday well, is to try and promote whatever it is, it is. they are making money This is a food item, of so you can play at home while these guys try to guess what it is that's being celebrated on May 20th. It looks like a berry, but it isn't a berry. It's a member of the rose family. One plant of this will remain productive year after year for about five years. Belgium has a museum dedicated to these waffles, things. Waffles, Belgium waffles. <laughs> In America, these date back to Native American time. California produces about 80% of them each year, and they can be pistachios. Picked, frozen, turned into jam, or eaten raw. And How studies. How are pistachios a berry? <laughs> oh, I but they're the not berry. a berry. <laughs> no, but that was his guess. Because <laughs> they're not a berry, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, yeah, but you'll think this is a berry. Your mind thinks you're eating a berry. Rasp, straw, or blue? Those are my answers. We're getting closer. Cran. Students who load up on these, or studies show that people who load up on these before exercising have greater endurance and burn more calories. That's not a berry? It's strawberries. May 20th is strawberry picking day. That is the day that you go out and pick all your strawberries. I mean, if you can, they're not all ready yet in some areas. So we can't call them berries anymore? Well, apparently the seeds on the, out, because the seeds oh, are on the outside, they are not considered a berry. And do you know that every one of these, there's like 250 seeds in a strawberry. I've heard that. Strawberry. So how are they considered a rose? I read it on the internet. You know, every, oh. everything you read on the internet is accurate. So they really oh. are berries. Actually, I did get it from a credible source. Pistachios. <laughs> strawberry Museum in Belgium. Is that next to the Tulip Museum? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should take a Faith and Friends trip there and check it out. They don't speak out. English there and I don't speak Belgium. Oh, we're in trouble. Lots of good waffles though. Coming up today on Faith and Friends, the National Day of Prayer was earlier this month, but we believe the message of that day should continue all month and all year long. Coming up, we'll bring you the pastoral address from that National Day of Prayer given by Pastor Al Elmore. He cites statistics and examples of how our country has changed over the years since God and prayer was taken out of schools. Also today, an interview with Chris Conley of Kirkmont Center, a full-service Christian camp and retreat center in nearby Logan County. That is gearing up for another busy camp year. But first, today's scripture, and it comes from John chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Certainly peace is one of those words that we all have a grasp on and there's a lot of different nuances to peace, but in, in this sense, we're, we're talking about the inner peace, the inner calm, the inner strength that can be found through Jesus. So many times peace comes through prayer when we're turning over those things that worry us or we have anxiety about. But once we pray, God doesn't necessarily give us answers to those problems, but he brings us to a place where we know he's in control and we can have peace through that. Mm -hmm. And as Andy touched on peace, God can provide it. He also grants us freedom. And freedom was a key message heard in musical song last week at the National Day of Prayer. We start today's show highlights with the Temple Christian Elementary Choir. Today's OIO in the Community segment. Enjoy these young faces and energetic voices as they sing the song, Words to Live By.
as the last best hope of the earth, Abraham Lincoln. The God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time, Thomas Jefferson. In the true sense, freedom cannot be bestowed, it must be earned, Franklin D. Roosevelt. freedom ring from every state and every city we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children will join hands and sing in the words of the old spiritual free at last free at last thank God Almighty we are free at last Martin Luther King jr. The Gettysburg Address, Abraham Lincoln. those kids great we'll hear more from the national day of prayer coming up in just a moment with the pastoral address from pastor al elmore and i really encourage you to stick around the first time i heard this on the national day of prayer i was just awestruck by the statistics that he presented and what's happened to our united states as a result but right now we're going to keep talking about god and prayer in summer activities namely summer camp at kirkmont center in the zanesfield area Chris Conley is here with me to talk about this camping experience. Chris, tell me a little bit about Kirkmont Center. Well, it's, uh, it's been in operation for 54 years. It started as a Presbyterian camp um, in 63. And it's, uh, the last four years, it's turned into non-denominational non camp. And the thinking was that they could appeal to more uh, churches. You didn't ever have to be a Presbyterian to go to this camp, but by removing that stigma, it it uh, just, we wanted to open it up to anyone that we could get. So what does anyone mean? Are we talking about kids camp during the summer? Sure. Activities for groups? What all happens yeah. at this place? Uh, primarily, it's, it's kids through June and July. There's a 12-week there's a schedule that we offer. In the month of May, we have outdoor education, which many schools are there right now. We have Mechanicsburg and Urbana that's been coming to our camp for about 25 years. So some of the volunteers, helpers that's coming with the teachers actually went through the experience themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat to hear them talk. Uh, but they come for like a two or three day event and it's primarily revolved around science. So it's outdoor education. 
um, in the June July time frame it's more it's all Christian based and um, <clears throat> we provide camps but there are also churches that come to us that say we know what we want to do we just want the facilities mm. so we we can tailor it either way oh that sounds yeah. great that's yeah. great well let's talk about the facilities in a little bit but first I want to mention a few of the camps that are this year right. uh, just a wide variety really something for every kind of child sports mm -hmm. camp adventure camp two-week camp you can parents can really yeah. send their kids away for a couple right, weeks right. robotics camp <clears throat> uh, camp rejoice so you're offering something for every interest basically right that's what we try to do the the robotics camps new this year and and we had a teacher that approached us with the idea and we thought why not try it and we've already had some good response from that so um Many of those camps have been going on year after year, but like I say, we're always open to what's new so that we can bring in more people. There's a lot, uh, a lot of uh, different activities trying to get kids' attention nowadays, mm -hmm. so it, mm -hmm. you know, it's tough. So we're talking about things that are getting their attention, sports and adventure and robotics, but right. yet this is a Christian environment. Right. They're not just coming for those secular things. They're gonna exactly. do all that, right. but God is in the middle of this too, exactly. right? Exactly, right. Every morning starts off with a prayer, and every evening ends with some vespers of the campfire singing and things along that line. So, so tell me a little bit about the camp grounds itself. Let's mm -hmm. get these kids excited about okay. what they could be coming to see. There's, uh, there's 277 acres. Um, we've got uh, a rock climbing wall. We've got a zip line. We've got uh, canoeing, fishing, hiking. Um, there's many things to capture their attention. They'll, they'll sleep in what we call cabins, which is a cabin tent combination. So it's, it's in nature, but at the same time, it's not um, out in the sticks, mm -hmm. okay? So they're up out of the bugs and things along that line. It's got a roof over it. It's got canvas uh, so they can keep it up if it's colder. Typically, it's not that time of year, so they keep it down for the ventilation. But uh, the kids always come away with, with an experience, and, mm -hmm. and we see so many comments of, of how I can't wait till next year, you know, come back to camp. Why do you think it's important for parents to choose something like this? Parents can pick about anything for their kids in the summertime. Why send them to a Christian camp yeah. for a week? Um, <clears throat> you know, that's a, that's a good question because I'd never attended camp. And I didn't send my kids to camp because um, I just didn't see the value at the time. But in working with, with the camp for the last few years and, and seeing the different uh, results that come out of it, uh, kids that go there are truly enriched and they, they come away with stories that um, how they felt so accepted you know and, mm. and for the first time in my life I found God and so it's really uh, a good experience. Summer camp opportunities encourage you to go here. Here are the phone numbers and there is the email address to, to contact the individuals at Kirkmont Center. They also have a website where you can find out all of the information about all the different camp offerings, kirkmontcenter.com. Well, we're almost out of time, but with more, like we said earlier, there's more than just uh, opportunities for kids to go to camp. And we're talking about kids all the way up into high school ages. You've got camping for the high school right, age right. kids, but you also have rental facilities right. and you have things coming up. And June 4th, you have a back to the basics day. Right coming up with some fun things to do. Right, this is our second year for hosting uh, National Trails Day and it's an event across the country. Uh, we're one of the few sites in Ohio and we'll get people from all over the state that'll come. Um, this year we, we have this celebrity uh, from the Weather Channels named Creek Stewart and he's going to, he's a uh, naturalist. Uh, he's gonna have some programming there at the same time. And so we're looking forward to as many people as we can get. It's a free day. There's a lot of different activities that, that are, are going on that day. But uh, as you said, it's just an opportunity to see the facility mm -hmm. and, and uh, explore what we have to offer. All right, wonderful opportunity to get outside, be in God's incredibly wonderful creation and how better than on more than 200 acres of what a beautiful, beautiful location. Go to our events calendar at WTLW.com to find out more about the uh, event taking place June 4th. You can go to KirkmontCenter.com to find out more information, or you can call that phone number, those, either of the two phone numbers or the email address that we will have on the screen for you. And also don't forget all of you organizations that are looking for places to rent, to have your own organizational events. Kirkmont Center is an opportunity and folks, it's not far from us. Logan County is very, very close. 
Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Pastor Al Elmore brought to us a very strong message at the National Day of Prayer on May 5th at the UNOH Events Center. He cites statistics and examples that paint a picture of the path the United States has taken since God and prayer was removed from the schools. Here now with more on that is Pastor Al Elmore. Two months ago, my wife and I had the privilege of going to Seoul, Korea to attend an international global missions conference. On a Saturday, we were able to go on a tour to the DMZ. That's where the South Korea and North Korea soldiers actually face one another. That happened to be the day that two missiles were fired. It was uneasiness. But can I let you in on something today? The throne is still occupied. And his name is King Jesus. And he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we never, ever need to forget that. Our theme for today is Wake Up America. And our verse is Isaiah 58, 1, which says, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, Raise your voice like a trumpet. This reminds me of the passage in Jeremiah 6. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. But you said we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said we will not listen. Therefore, hear, you nations, you who are witnesses, observe what will happen to them. I am bringing disaster on this people because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me. I will put obstacles before this people. Parents and children alike will stumble over them. Neighbors and friends will perish. Let me say a word about our nation's founding fathers and the old past, America's heritage. This is where we came from. Many of you are mindful of this, but listen. All of this is documented. 52 of the 55 people who worked on the Constitution of America were evangelical Christians. They were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The old past, the government, our founding fathers were Christians. Let me share some quotes from three founding fathers so you will know where we came from. Patrick Henry, most known for his statement, give me liberty or give me death. But he said something far greater than that. He said it cannot be emphasized too strongly and too often that this nation was not found by religion but Christians. John Quincy Adams, a congressman for 18 years and president of our nation said, the highest glory of the American Revolution is this bound together, the principles of Christianity and the principles of civil government. And he went on to say, now don't miss this, America's Constitution was made for moral and religious people. It will not work for any other people. John Jay, our first Supreme Court Justice, said, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers and it is our duty and our privilege to choose and prefer Christians as our leaders. You see, we somehow wonder how America became the most blessed land in all of the world. While we've never really known a foreign invasion. Why? Because of the old paths that we walked in. In fact, the University of Houston decided to do a study to see why our government has lasted for over 200 years. In the same time period, France has had seven different forms of government and Italy, 48. So what the University of Houston did, understand a secular university, was gather 15,000 writings of our founding fathers. They sifted through them and came up with 3,154 that they decided to study to see what was the genius of the government that has lasted in America for over 200 years. This is what they found as they studied those 3,000 documents. 16 times more than these men were quoted, the Bible was quoted. 34% of all the quotes in those documents came from the word of the living God. Then they also found out that 60% 
of the other quotes of these founding fathers derived their source from the Word of God, and this was the amazing conclusion by a secular university that 94% of the writings of the founding fathers were directly affected by the Word of God. And they said the reason that our government has survived and flourished for these 200 plus years as a republic with a constitution is because it was directly founded on the principles of the Word of Almighty God. Now that is the ancient paths that we walked in at one time. Have you wondered where we got the idea of the three branches of government? The legislation, the executive, the judicial. Did you know the founding fathers got it from the word of God? It was upon this scripture in Isaiah 33, 22, that they were guided to form the three separate branches of government. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king it is He who will save us. The Lord is our judge, judicial. The Lord is our lawgiver, legislator. The Lord is our king, executive. Our founding fathers were committed followers of Jesus, and our government was based upon the principles of the living God. That's why it has stood the test of 200 plus years. What about education? For 200 years in America, there was a book that was used in the public schools called the New England Primer. From 1690 to 1890, they were all in a one-room schoolhouse, and the book included the alphabet and history. One book. They had an interesting way of teaching the alphabet. A, a wise son makes a glad father. A foolish son makes great heaviness for his mother. B, better is a little fear of the Lord than a great treasure without. C, come unto Christ, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hmm, interesting stuff, isn't it? Our founding fathers and the foundation of their government were distinctly unapologetic and aggressively Christian. Our education was filled and saturated with the Word of God. Well, when did we leave the old path? It was June 1962 to June of 1963. This is when we left. And I want to show you what happened since we left those old paths. Prayer and Bible reading were removed from the public schools of our land during this time. Never before had it been challenged or questioned. Two suits, Engel versus Vitali and Abington versus Shem. In these two suits, with no precedence whatsoever to support the Supreme Court decision, they handed down these rulings. That was when America left the old paths. In Engel versus Vitali, they removed prayer from school. The prayer they ruled that couldn't be prayed was only 24 words. Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon Thee. We beg Thy blessings upon us, upon our parents, upon our teachers, and our Amen. In Abington versus Shemp, they declared school-sponsored Bible reading in public schools to be unconstitutional. Church and state had never been used. No precedence whatsoever. The Supreme Court said if the Bible was read without an explanation, it could cause psychological harm. Dear God, the books in school today can cause a lot more than psychological harm. Amen? Amen. This is when they took the Bible out of school. At the time they did, 3% of people in America didn't believe in God. And 97% did. And what they said is, we will ignore the 97% and go with the three. As I close, let me show you what happened when we left the old paths. This is what blew me away. David Barton researched some things prior to Bible reading and prayer in public schools. You say, what about family? Up until 1963, the divorce rate had declined for 15 straight years. Between 1963 and 1983, it tripled every year from the day we took it out of public schools. But there's the, the one that blew my mind is this. You remember in that 24-word prayer, they prayed for God to bless the families and their education? Up until 1963, 
The ACT scores had never fluctuated but a little bit every two years. It had remained the same for 20 years prior, but from 1963 to 1981, the ACT scores went down steadily. No explanation except, God, we acknowledge our dependence upon you. We beg your blessings upon our teachers and our schools, but we said, no, you can't have God in school. In 1989, we graduated 700,000 students who could not read their diploma. We left the old paths. Today, some 20 plus years later, 25% of all students in the US, United States of America failed to graduate from high school. What about government? America has always been number one. But let me tell you something with a broken heart. Since 1963, America's number one, all right, in violent crime, teenage pregnancy, divorce, abortions, use of illegal drugs, illiteracy, and many other issues. And every bit of it can be traced back to this. The late pastor, J. Vernon McGee, said this. We don't need a declaration of independence, but a declaration of dependence. Yes, we need to wake up. We need God in this city, and we need God in America again. And let's keep praying, let's keep sharing, and let's shout it aloud. Do not hold back and raise our voices like a trumpet. Amen. All right, some great words from Al Elmore. All right, time to pull those bike helmets out again. Yes, bike helmets are important. Are you wearing it correctly, Andy? I can't not buckle it. Not to the back, not to the front. Well, it's adjustable. Secure on. This week is National Bike Safety Week, and whether you ride bikes or your children or grandchildren do, we've got some safety tips that are applicable to all ages. I find that sometimes parents think that just the kids need to do these things, but no, it's important that every one of us are focusing on these. These are from the cityofmadison.com website and number one they say is wear a bike helmet. All ages wear a bike helmet. Also stay visible. If you're biking at night make sure you have appropriate bike lighting and use your hand signals as well. Do you know the hand signals guys? Do you know how to do that? You got the bike helmet 35 on. 35 years ago I did but <laughs> isn't one of them this? This, yes. Yep, that's stop. But it's always with your left hand. That's right. It's always so that the, the cars behind you are seeing you do those. I used to feel really awkward using these, and then I started biking to work, and so I was in the middle of some pretty bad traffic, and I discovered how important they were. That I could die if I'm not careful in these things. Stay alert. Watch for obstacles in your path, and very important, watch for drivers who do not see you. Go with the flow, bike in the same direction as traffic. Remember, you walk and run against traffic, you bike with traffic, and this is a fun one. Act like a car. Don't weave in and out of traffic. Instead, consider yourself like another vehicle out on the road and follow those rules, and you can even make honking sounds if you like. Well, but avoid distractions like making sure. honking sounds. You don't want to listen to music. You don't want to talk on the phone. You also want to obey all traffic lights and laws. And then number nine and ten, make sure your bike is ready. Is the seat at the proper height? Did your, are your tires correctly inflated? Do a quick bike check each time before you head out to avoid any emergency problems. Now, many of you recently made the decision to support TV44 during our recent Spring to Life campaign. And for that, we say thank you. We raised $62,244, and we are incredibly appreciative of every one of you who joined us on our spring campaign. Thank you to a $75 donation from uh, Lima. In fact, it said $75 towards the pledge and then $25 for the Spring to Life campaign. So oh, well. extra, thank you so very much. Thanks to Judy in Wapakoneta, Clarence and Rose in Hamler for your generous donations as well. You are part of our family and we're so thankful that you count us as part of yours. Your gift to TV44 any time of the year is appreciated and used specifically to expand the gospel of Jesus Christ. No gift is too small, no gift is too large. God uses it all. It is His money. Donate securely at WTLW.com by mail, over the phone, or in person. Also consider signing up for Automatic Monthly Withdrawal, a safe and reliable way to continue to partner with TV44 every month of the year.
Of course, another great way to partner with TV44 is through our auction. And yes, we're already get, taking auction donations. No, I'm is not. Is that, that bike an auction? That bike is not <laughs> right. an auction donation. Though nice. I'm sure we're going to get quite a few bikes. We get. That's you my get bike. Almost I'm keeping my bike. 15, 20 bikes Seems each like year. It. So the bikes are a great <laughs> item you could perhaps pick up at the auction in September. Good quality furniture items are always something we're looking for. Tools, quality collectibles, and automobiles. You can bring your items to TV44 Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call ahead for Friday drop-offs. For more information, contact us at 419-339-4444. And remember, this year's auction is September the 10th. And we close with another look at our scripture. Remember, we're focusing on godliness throughout the month of May. John 14, 26 and 27, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance of all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When we need help to get to that godliness that we all desire, it's the Holy Spirit that is weeding out things in our life and also making the path straight for us as we go forward. Hope you have a great week here on Faith and Friends. Thanks for joining us.